Hello everyone, Crydax here, and welcome back to Factorio Space Age, where we are preventing things from spoiling and or letting them spoil and then burning the spoilage. Am I burning the spoilage, actually? No, I have 16,000 spoilage. Um, so we need some way of burning spoilage. So let's get that going. So we've got our recyclers here already. What I might do is just put some heat towers behind them. And we will set these guys to run. Only if spoilage in the network is greater than, let's just say 20,000. Um, and do that and then request spoilage. Makes it sound fancy when you call it spoilage. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think twenty thousand is enough, Waskly. Maybe it's not. Maybe twenty thousand is underdoing it. But now, what's the best way to generate spoilage? Is the new question, and the answer might is it bacteria? Bacteria spoils quickly, but no, that's a lot of bioflux for that spoilage. Probably just nutrients, right? Because we get eight per bioflux, but even that might not be worth it. Because mm, I get six. Is it just better to spoil the jelly or the mash? Or is it better to spoil the nutrients from bioflux? Probably nutrients from bioflux in terms of raw numbers. Um. Because we're multiplying, we're getting productivity twice. So if you think about it, we're we're doing 27 objects to make six bioflux, but then that six bioflux is making more than 60 nutrients. So yeah, that so definitely definitely better um, stuff you would have burned anyway. Now there's a thought. Um, I certainly can do that pretty easily right here and here and at least get some free spoilage this way I can't really rely on the rates of that but it's something and then yeah, so we're doing sulfur next. That's why we're dealing with spoilage, because sulfur will get us batteries and blue circuits. And I need batteries for laser turrets. And I need laser turrets to not die. And potentially rockets, which also need explosives, which need sulfur. So back to sulfur all day long. So why don't we... Well, how many are we realistically going to need here? Probably not that many. So what if I just continue this chain? And I'm leaving the space because I might want more rocket fuel. And... And then we actually need spoilage, huh? His buffer chest with spoilage and 250,000 of it. Yeah, that's a lot. I don't think I'll need that much. But I am not mega basing here. More like micro basing. All right, rider chest, blacklist, spoilage. Whitelist, spoilage. Okay, there we go. Biosulfur done. I'm just gonna let those fill up. And yeah, that's what I was worried about. We are having bioflux issues. So let's do another speed beacon here.
Uh, one more beacon? Why not? And then is Jelly going to be the problem? 6.31. I need to move that forwards. Just three. Yeah, it seems that Yumako Mash is still the problem. make more of it? Uh, that would be silly. Because <sighs> this is kind of the best I can do, it seems. I could maybe get a little more. Still with another beacon. It's 25 a second. Just seeing if we ever stop because the output's full. But it seems like those two inserters are able to keep them. Because these can use 13.6 a second each, which is right about what we're making. So that's pretty close. Okay. So then that's still... These are using an absurd amount of bioflux, two per second each, uh, to make sulfur. But that should back up pretty quick. I'm hoping. Um... I'm not super worried about that. Though, 7.3 sulfur. Uh, what is... Uh, buh, 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 buh. Sorry, I'm... Getting forgetful. 5 sulfur makes 50 sulfuric acid. Okay. Um... So a battery is like two sulfur, and a blue chip is like half a sulfur, and then we can make those in the EMPs. Maybe I maybe I don't need quite. The amount. Let's just do like two thousand. And then this is going to turn to spoilage. Oh, yeah, right, of course, the rocket fuel is taking. So this is where we don't want more rocket fuel. I'm, I'm just laughing at myself for all the reasons. Because it's like, I need bioflux for other things. But I do want the rocket fuel to run pretty constantly. So maybe I just want to slow down the rocket fuel. Maybe that's maybe that's the play here. Rather than changing anything, we'll just slow it down a smidge. And then that lets more of the bioflux through. Also having issues with output rate um, with the bioflux. So let's hold on. I'm gonna change something here. I'm gonna put bioflux on a belt here, and then we're oh, that's uh, we're gonna do this. So that way I don't have to worry about these long inserters causing problems. Okay, so are we backing up or not? Mako Mash stopped for a second. 
Do we have a nutrients problem? Oh, maybe because I... No, we're just out of Yumako Mash. Oh. Oh. Well, that's a fixable problem. Um... That's a fixable problem. Okay, so... We'll do that. And then... These guys... Marco Soil. Perfect. Get rid of these extra trees in here. Get rid of all your weird output. And then wire you up to the same network. Perfect. Leva keeps growing more and more. Your mental health was struggling in the beginning. Yeah, it it's a weird it's weird. Like it's stressful at the beginning cuz everything can spoil, but I do think they are my favorite systems in the game. Still. Okay, I think 9, 12, 14 more trees is enough. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's enough. Um, I could do a chest here again to kind of keep things flowing more evenly. Let's do that. Mm. No, this is fine. Chests are annoying because of inserted. I really wish we had uh, two by two chests in vanilla. I understand that the reason they're not in the game is because it would simplify some of the logistics challenges that the team, the dev team, wants you to have to deal with. But at the same time, it, it causes you to have to do annoying things like using multiple chests when really you just want one inventory and now you have to deal with the fact that they're two separate inventories, which causes more annoyances than helps. So there are just some annoying things like that that you have to deal with. but. It's fine. Okay, so we're gonna have to wait another couple minutes until that irons itself out. But we've got sulfur, so that's good. Now let's look into sulfuric acid. Um, don't have the cryogenic plant, so not gonna do that. So the sulfuric acid itself is pretty easy to make. Maybe put that up here. All right, we got some space. As I'll definitely want to prod module this. And we need sulfur plus iron. Mm. Oh no, we're running out of modules. And I'm not making blue circuits yet. Wow, even without any sort of speed beaconing, these are still doing 160 sulfuric acid a second. That's probably enough even already. And we only need about three sulfur a second. So this is one of those scenarios where I'm like, what's actually better? Should I do four separate requester chests or one requester chest and then put it on the belt? And I never actually know. But I'll just do four separate requester chests. And then water. There we go. Sulfuric acid is good to go. Now, batteries. Out of chemical plants? Yeah, we'll handcraft a few. I'm not going to need that many. Um, I do hate how slow batteries are. 
I mean, I, I, maybe hate is too strong of a word. I'll live. I'm out of modules. Okay, fair enough. batteries a second. I like the enable disable of the logistics chests, except for the part where you can't do it based on the logistics network. You have to do it based on a wire, which means you have to wire up literally the most logistic item in the base. You have to connect with a wire to a robo port to read the contents of the network. That still makes zero sense to me, and it's quite frustrating. Um, apart from that, it's, it's fine. And quite helpful. Do a lock. Uh, what I'm saying is, like, if I wanted to disable this, like, let's say I only wanted to make batteries if I had at least 100 iron plates in the network. I have to actually connect this to a robo port to do that. I can't just hit the little wireless button up here to read the amount, which just feels really off to me. So like you can connect it, but you, you can only read from a circuit network. You can't read from the logistics network. So there's no way you can interact with the logistics network, even though it's literally a logistics chest. So I don't get that. It bothers me. All right, let's make some batteries here. Ah, what am I doing? Hit this, control F, battery. Batteries less than, I don't know, 1200? Sure, sounds great. Yeah, exactly. Inserters can connect to the network, but a literal logistics chest can't. It just doesn't make sense. It makes no sense. All right, cool. Batteries done. And now blue circuits. I probably, I don't know. Do I need them down here? I like having it all next to each other. Oh, you know what I need to do is make my new mall blueprint the better version. The basic mall V3. So you create a copy and then we place it and we don't change anything. And then we replace the building with this and then we select zero and then we go in copy it, EMP Basic mall, V3, select new contents, these contents, and it all should work. I'm just gonna assume it does. Uh, and then we change the icon, cause that's gonna bother me, to this. And then now we've got it. Cool. Okay, so then we place that, EMP basic mall, for the blue chips. And stacks, they stack to 100. So I think I want 2,000 in the network for rocket launching purposes. So 20 stacks. No, not 51, 20. And then we'll copy that to here and I'll flip that. And now those are connected. And then we'll do a couple more. And that should be more than enough. And now we need to bring the sulfuric down. So, we need to do that here. Oh, 
Alright, close enough. Oh, right here. Connect, 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 connect. Uh, connect. Boom, boom. And then finally. Connect. Perfect. Hey, they're spinning. Nice. Blue circuits on Glaba. Do I think it's a coding reason, Bigo? Um, I assume you're talking about the logistic chest not connecting thing. Maybe. I don't think so, but it's possible that that would be too hard to get it performant. I'm guessing if they didn't do it, it's more because it, it's really bad performance rather than not possible. Or maybe it was just a lot of work to change it because it didn't because they're already logistics chests. They're connected to the network coding wise in a way that wouldn't allow them to also connect that way. I don't know. I I, I have no idea how the game works in the hood, so I couldn't say. But yeah, I probably should have put green chips on a belt for these. But you know what? We're just living with the consequences. Um. And these are going way too fast for the green circuit request to keep up. So I'm going to double this to 240 and 24. Whoa, not 240. Okay. Well, that should do it for uh, rocket launching. Now I just need to get a silo and get some Glabian science, and then we need to automate laser turrets so that we can uh, defend ourselves properly, or at least somewhat properly. I know the strafers are kind of a problem, but a good, a good wall of laser turrets should at least get a, a bit of death going. I'm gonna do two of these because they're slow. And I should have done two stacks because I want two stacks. I am spoiled in my fancy suit. <laughs> That's, that is exactly right. Um, Alright, I'm gonna make those go extra fast. How's power, by the way? We're using about 75 megawatts. That's not bad. Now, why why am I getting Yumako itself? We shouldn't be getting Yumako. Because we're stopping when we have 300, which backs it up to about here. Maybe it's getting just enough that it backs up past that a tiny bit. So maybe this one should only run when we're less than like 275. Maybe that'll help slow things down a bit. Okay, uh, what are the bots doing? Oh, they're bringing spoilage over here to get burned. Because we have too much of it. Ah, yes. So now I need to do a thing. So since I'm burning more than 20,000 spoilage, we need... Um, this. We need these to turn off. If we have, uh, this only runs if we have less than 19,000 spoilage. So that way we're not just randomly collecting spoilage that we then need to get rid of. Right. Because then the, we're just making our logistics bots do a lot of extra work. Imagine if you had hunger and thirst in Factorio. It really, like, it's funny how many people have mentioned the lack of that, because I think they're just used to Minecraft, right? Which is kind of like, in some ways, industry standard for sandboxed kind of games. And so hunger and thirst, therefore, become some amount industry standard. But like, what would it add to the game? It just, it doesn't add anything to the game. And I think a lot of people agree that it doesn't add a lot to Minecraft when you're playing big mod packs like Greg Tech New Horizons. 
Like, a lot of people get frustrated with the Pam's Harvest Craft stuff and everything. I think it adds... It's it's like a fun mini game, is what it is to me. But I don't think it actually fits with the greater game very well. Um, okay, so now as far as rocket fuel... Now that I have this set up... Should I... Where's all this spoilage coming from? I guess they're just bringing it from the storage chests, rather than wherever it's ending up. Hmm. I'm actually completely out of sulfur. So maybe once rocket fuel... Maybe we should turn off this nonsense. Maybe these guys should only work if we have... Fuel. Less than 2100. I know, I know, this is going against what we set up last time, but it's fine. <laughs> yeah, it's not a fun mini game in 99% of games. And I, I think I think hunger and thirst mechanics really only make sense in a certain subset of games where it's actually a big part of what you're doing and why you're doing it, like actual survival games. I think Hunger and Thirst can be fun, but otherwise they tend to just be annoyances that you have to keep up with. Oh, I can make laser turrets and EMPs. What am I doing? Hold the phone. Hold the phone. We can do this a bit better. Oh, just kidding. Whoops. I cannot make laser turrets in EMPs. <laughs> yeah, I can make Tesla turrets, uh, but not laser. That's weird. Why can't you make laser turrets? That actually feels odd to me. Of all the things, I feel like laser turrets would be on the list. But they're not. All right, so the issue is cable. Got it, got it, got it, got it, okay. Um, now that I have more power, I think I'm safe to do this, and we can boost up our cable making by a lot more. There we go. We went from 650 a minute to 2300 a minute. Yeah, that's almost quadrupling our cable making. And our power is still able to handle it. So that's good. Cool, 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 cool. All right. And these are actually probably generating enough heat that I don't need to run rocket fuel. But we are running rocket fuel if I have more than 2000. But these are running if we have 21. Should I change this to 1900? And then we're not even. But then these will stop before I'm heating the base, is the problem. If I need the rocket fuel heat, these are going to screw me over. So I actually want the rocket fuel heating to remain constant, so I'll set that to 2100. Um, I could add in a special combinator that's like, oh, if the temperature's low, we start back up the rocket fuel production, but whatever, this is fine. Um, this is fine. Because these are not actually consuming that much rocket fuel per second, right? Like, if you watch, you know, one of these is lasting, what, six seconds? And I have five of them. So these are consuming less than one rocket fuel per second in total. That's not really a big problem. Um, and... It actually seems like this request is not big enough, so I'm going to change it to 60. And that should help a bit with our sulfur problems. And then the blue chips are looking good. What do we got? 
We've got... Oh, right, they're not called servants. 1,100? Nice. Alright, well... Pretty pleased with all of... Resources we've got going on here. Now I need a rocket silo, and we need science. Wow, feels weird to already be... Already be looking at Glabian science packs. So they are just a single bioflux and a single pentapod egg. For a pack. And that's really for 1.5 packs because of the biochamber productivity. Um, interesting. We'll have plenty of extra bioflux. Um, so it's just a matter of making some more eggs, which require mostly just nutrients, which in a weird way is just more bioflux. So why don't we do that over here? Get rid of some boom, boom puffs. Oh, that makes me think of puffer trees. I'm glad the Factorio devs didn't add in a fart fart machine to the game, like the Angels mods. <laughs> um, Alright, so let's get some more biochambers. Make some eggs. Gotta crack an omelet to make some eggs, or however the saying goes. Okay, so, nutrients, let's start with the speed beacon and just see what that does. We need power before we know what that does. I'm out of lamps, that is code red. This really is some majestic music, I'm digging it. So that's 40 nutrients per second. That's a lot of nutrients. Um, that's a lot of nutrients. Okay. But that's probably about what we need. I mean, maybe four, because what is this going to be? Four times eight is 32. So then that's like five science a second, basically, with some prod modules somewhere. That's probably more than we need but not by an absurd amount. So that means we do need a bioflux nutrient maker. And the nutrients and the bioflux can be on separate thingamajiggers. feed itself, of course, with nutrients. Um, and then we'll feed in the nutrients to each of these guys. Like so. And then we'll... Uh, then what will we do? Oh boy. Now is when things get tricky. Okay. Um, oh, these are eggs, not bioflux. What am I doing? Uh, the bioflux goes on to later stuff. So here, we want all the eggs. Let's just use long inserters. I don't know. I, I'm I'm scared of them these days because they're so slow. But this is not a large throughput, so we're fine. All right. So there will be the eggs. And maybe some spoilage once in a while, but I don't foresee that being a problem. Um, but we'll sort out the spoilage in case we need to. 
And then, oh yeah, quality long inserters. I forgot about that. Oh my gosh. I, I, I just need quality everything. That'll be such a fun, such a fun shift when we start getting quality everything. Um, anywho, I think I will just bring Bioflux on a belt. It's like snakes on a plane, Bioflux on a belt. Uh, like this, and then I'll steal some nutrients for you. Kick start it. And then... That's running. Okay, now we need some water. Done. Um, <laughs> we're building in on top of a swamp. Get out of me swamp. Ooh, I could do quality, quality pentapod eggs. Oh, man, if I was doing quality bioflux, that would actually be worth it. The reason it's worth it, I think, more than prod modules. And I don't actually know if this is true. It's probably not worth it still. Because prod modules are just better, but when you get higher quality, it spoils slower, and it's worth more science. So between both of those, by the time you get it to novice, it might just be better. Um, I'm not totally sure how that works, but we're going to delete all these. So the Glabian Nightmare is going to have Glaba Science Ship. SS for spaceship. Space station? Um, we'll go with 4,000 packs per trip. And bio chambers. We'll do 60 bio chambers. No, maybe just 40 per trip at most. And then we're going to do Glaba, weight condition, all requests satisfied, or time passed. We don't want to wait longer than five minutes. Well, no, 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 no. Ten minutes from when we get there. It's fine, because it's going to take a minute to launch all the rockets. And then it's going to go to Nalvis, and we're going to do the same thing, like an 610 minutes or item count, cargo, those are emptied out. The problem is, does that... It'll empty out the biochambers too, but what if it emptied out those and then the biochambers were about to be emptied out, but then it saw that it had zero science packs and it just leaves? I actually don't know if that works or not. Regardless, let's get back to our egg loop here. So... Yeah, I mean, I think this is basically the same as what we're doing over there. We just need to make sure the eggs get fed back into the process here. Um, so what I'm thinking is we actually just loop this around. And then those that's where we actually use the, yeah, it just self feeds. Uh, we'll stack size one on all that. That's great. Should work. And then this is what goes to make the science. And then we'll do that. And this, and this, and this, and this, and this. And once we get that rolling with eggs, that should be agricultural science packs. I think. Maybe. Maybe, maybe? Yes? A uh, couple more. Here. Uh, and then we need a way to get rid of spoiled eggs. Or should I just make it so I'm always consuming all the eggs? 
But if I'm consuming all the eggs, I'm consuming all the bioflux. I don't know if we have enough bioflux. It's gonna be tight. Hmm. Um, I think the eggs need to... I think the eggs need to move on to a burner. Yeah, this is just, you know, being careful 101. <laughs> so we'll do that, uh, and then we'll also do this. Filter, spoilage. Okay. Set up T-Rex enclosures. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's so fun that you can literally just have an enemy spawning method. You could just watch your turrets constantly kill enemies, just for fun, for fun and profit. All right, so now I just grab a few eggs, chuck them in there, get rid of the spoilage that's everywhere. I guess we need a spoilage. Uh, get a rid of rubber up here. And, uh, oops, all spoilage again. Yeah, okay. I guess we need these guys. We're gonna stack size one on them again so they're not putting in way too many eggs that end up way too spoiled. Um, and then, now here's where things get tricky. We need a lot of cargo silos. Cargo silos? Rocket silos. Which I have not started making yet. Because we need the launches to happen really fast. The faster the launches happen, the better. So what we're going to do is we're going to automate... Silo. We're going to automate silos here. Go for two silos. Oh, electric engines? Are you kidding me? Uh, I don't want to do electric engines. Gross. Um. Rick. Okay. We're fine. Engine. Push X. Alright, so then. Are we gonna have to. Please don't tell me we're gonna have to do like. Making carbon from spoilage to make coal to do liquefaction, right? Please don't tell me that. Uh, no, there's biolubricant right there. Okay. Okay, that's better. All right. We're fine, we're fine. So then... Electric engine... 20 stacks... It's really sad that assemblers don't have pass-through fluids like the new stuff does. Um, where do I have... Jelly and nutrients. Make bio lubricant. How much lubricant do we need per engine? Fifteen. Mm. 
might need this to come a little closer. Do some faster inserters here. And what's that gonna do to me? It's gonna lose me some heat. That's fine, that's what rocket fuel's for. engine units are rolling. Speed all that up. That should get us a rocket silo eventually. One per second means that gets me one rocket silo every three and a half minutes. I can accept that. That's not that crazy, given I'm only going to need ten or less. I'm thinking ten is what we want. Um... Because 10 rocket silos will launch 10,000 science in one go. Oh, I don't even need 10. Right, I forgot that they launch like 1,000 packs or 2,000 packs even. What is it? Yeah, it's 1,000 packs. I was thinking they only launched one stack at a time. So to load all the science, we're, so maybe I only need like three silos or four. I'll go with four, which is what I did on Vulcanus. Oh, nutrients. Oh, nutrients. <laughs> um... Let's just do this. automated the science pack now we just need to get it out of here so cargo what is it called cargo landing rocket silo um i should probably have it closer to all the materials like over here but that's fine the, the logistics bots will figure it out i need one Three. Three. That didn't look like the right amount of space. Oh, that's too much space. Okay. So then... We need the beacon. I have no prod modules left. That's unfortunate. Uh, so we need some prod production. EMP basic mall. I'll go with prod ones. Prod ones. I have no green circuits because I have no iron, and I have no iron because we have no molten iron, and I have no molten iron because I'm out of calcite. I forgot about calcite. Ah, damn it. Um, completely forgot about calcite. So the derpamu, unload all your calcite. And then we'll head back to Vulcanus and go get another big chunk of calcite, and that'll last me a bit. I need to pay attention to calcite. I hate that. I guess I can get calcite from orbit now. So maybe I need to build a little calcite station. I'll put that on the to-do list. Um, 
Is it ever gonna drop those? There we go. And while I'm here, let's drop some more belts and stuff. I guess I had plenty of electric engines I could have dropped. But too late now. Okay, so you head back to Vulcanus. Wait, why do I have Fulgora stuff selected? The Hendrickson is the Fulgora. You need to have the Vulcanus. Science and buildings. Calcite. What's our actual calcite usage? Um, I mean, we've averaged since we got here on Gleba about six a minute. It'll be interesting to see when we've got the, the steady state going, how long it's lasting, but that's not very much. I mean, at our highest, it's 20 a minute. Which means if I bring a thousand, a thousand is an hour's worth. So if I bring five thousand, that's five hours worth. I can probably get that much from asteroids, though, right? Because we've got, we've, we're about to be able to unlock the recipe. Where is it? This one. Yeah. So this recipe. We either can get five ice from an oxide asteroid, or we can get three ice and two calcite. Yeah, that'll be plenty of calcite. I think. Because if we go to our space station, which is old and decrepit and technically still working, um, how many oxide chunks are we getting per minute up here? An average of 0.7 per minute. And this is parked over Nalvis, which has no asteroid chunks and is doing no reprocessing. And that would already be 1.4 calcite a minute with no productivity or anything. Okay, yeah, we'll be fine. Because we'll get way more than that when we do the asteroid reprocessing. Um... Do I want to use bots for the science packs, or do I want to use hmm, just regular loading? I think I want to use bots um, just because they simplify the, the storage and fetching and all that. But I'll put them very close, the packs. And if I'm doing 4,000 per trip, 200, so that's 2,000. So I will just load up exactly that much. Oh, spoilage. Wait, how are we getting spoilage on this belt? Oh, 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 oh. right. Um, because the nutrients are spoiling. I know the science pack will spoil eventually, but it doesn't spoil that fast. But then you can be a spoilage long inserter. Plus active provider. Alright. Yeah, because the packs last like a yeah, an hour. Okay. Oh, there's a tree in the way. I was like, wow, that grass is really covering that belt. <laughs> there we go. All right, and then we can load up these guys. 
with at least a little bit of prod here. And then we'll go full speed, which might be too much power. I don't know if we can actually handle that amount of power. We will find out. Um, and then request. Boom, boom. I will request enough for two rockets on each. Probably overkill again. But this should work. Okay, we got our second silo built. Things are happening. Science is being made. What's the rate right now? The rate is... Ooh, 7.7 .7 a minute. That's not... Oh, okay, there we go. Two a second? That's not fast enough. Why are we why are we going that slow? I thought we mathed it out and we were getting way more than that. Oh, these are not running constantly. That's Oh, this one doesn't have an inserter that actually can reach anything. So there's part of the problem. Um Point eight three. Do we speed up with this? No, we slow down with prod modules. I weird, but then we also use a lot less nutrients. So, we can add another speed, maybe. Put this one up here. Do that. So there's plenty of biter eggs. Four per second. The problem is these aren't fast enough now. So we'll prodify those and then speed. Oh, I knew this was going to be a problem. Um, need those to be in the edges. And this needs to go up a tile. This leaves me room for a beacon. For each pair. Okay, there we go. That should be able to eat all of the eggs science and now we probably have too much science too much science if anything I'm guessing Automatic requests. Power is acceptable. And we have almost a thousand science. Cool, cool, cool. So what's our production rate now? Uh, no turrets. Wait, where would I need turrets? I'm, I'm ditching all the extra eggs, so we shouldn't ever have... Because these eggs are going to turn into science, so those can't spoil. And these eggs are constantly flowing straight to the burner. So there's, there's no possibility of egg spoilage. Unless we run out of nutrients. Hmm, now that I think about it that way. Now that I think about it that way... But assuming the buildings are running, we can't run out. But, yeah. Probably shouldn't have missed that. And then... We have to think about pollution. Is 
So let's do something like this. And yes, I am just gonna randomly put this around my agriculture area. And we're gonna let the bots sort out how to get it all placed with landfill. And what I should also do is automate, um, what's it called? Uh, bu -bu 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 the repair packs. Let's do that. We're in the mall here. That's good. Apparently we need substations. And yeah, I think we're an hour and two minutes into the episode. Oh my gosh, how do these go so fast? It's crazy. Okay, so we're defending those and we're defending these. Now my question is, what if they get aggroed from here and come straight through? Will they kill all the stuff on the way or will they skip it? I actually don't know how that works. It is kind of annoying to not be told exactly how the aggro mechanics work. I know Dave was asking this in the in the Discord earlier too, because it's like I kind of need to know how this works so I know how I can leave the planet. Because it's not we're not going to run into the issue for a while. It's going to be a long time before they expand into this cloud and start attacking me. So it's kind of frustrating to not to not know. Um, not enough storage, huh? Well. How's that? So yeah, it's like, do I need any defenses over here? They don't have a reason to attack this area, but what if they're what if there's a bunch of stompers and they walk straight through the middle? I mean, I guess I already have some lasers. But we'll just make sure we're okay here. What's the laser draw? Only five megawatts. Okay, they're not drawing as much power as I thought they would. That's really not a problem. Um, all right, the Glabian Nightmare can go ahead and automatic here. Here it comes. It'll go a little faster. Someone else was mentioning this earlier. We can. There are a bit of, a bit of free tonnage we can remove without any downside. I know there's technically a few more, but it's fine. <laughs> you landed on Glebo two days ago, and after looking at the new tech, decided it was time for a break. Glaba is certainly the most overwhelming of all of the planets. I should probably protect my power as well, just to be extra safe.
Alright, now the Derpamu is grabbing calcite for us. Is it done? Uh, I think it's done. You come back to Gleba. Glabian Nightmare is on its way. Using up its fuel supplies. Now, there's a whole new world to be had when we start using productivity modules and beacons on these stations. And then we're using, like, nuclear reactors to, to power things. Because then we're not going to have to worry about making power with, you know, lower rate solar panels and stuff. But that's that stuff we'll deal with when we're going to Aqualo, where there is no solar. This is still going to work. This is still going to work. Okay, now is 4,000 packs too many packs? What's the actual... What's the math work out to here? So, if we're making... a stable 200 a minute, then that's 20 minutes? No, I don't want to wait 20 minutes for the cycle. I want to wait 10 minutes. So we're going to say 2,000 packs is it. And then we're going to go back to Novus. And then Novus, we're going to dump the packs here. Oh, gosh. Um... Agricultural science pack. 2000. Actually, we should just add the section. And then... Basically copy that. But these will be agricultural pack. Okay. Wait, what? Yeah, okay. So those are gonna throw the packs into the network, and now we're gonna have the problem of packs turning into spoilage. So we're gonna need to handle that somewhere. Um, maybe here. But otherwise it should be fine. We'll get rid of spoilage from this. Um, active provide. This one's going to request agricultural science pack 1000 and then we wire up this belt, copy the settings and we say agricultural science pack is less than 65. So that'll put packs on the belt. Now, here's a weird one. I might need more than 65 because they're not... Each pack doesn't hold as much time because it's part spoiled, which is kind of annoying. But... What can I do? Um, and then... Hook that up. And then we need this part of the belt to be hooked up to the same network. Read all belts. Okay, that's good. That's good. Output party right, spoilage. Uh, I just realized a problem that you guys have probably already noticed. Spoilage is gonna end up in the labs. <laughs> Um, frick. Uh, 
Oh, that's annoying. It's really annoying. Ooh, the Glabian Nightmare is on it. Wait. What? Wait, what just happened? I'm so confused. How did it... It's on its way from Nalvis back to Gleba? Did I miss... Definitely... Oh, did we already... Hold on. Did we already get the science packs? Oh, we did. Okay. <laughs> here, here they are. Here's the first agricultural science pack. So, hey, I should start doing research. Uh, let's... No, not the 5,000. Let's start with a cheap one, like carbon fiber. And... Yeah, we'll do all these other cheap ones. Tree seeding. Efficiency module three. Um, carbon fiber. Tool belt equipment. Fish breeding. And then rocket turret. And then stack inserter. Blacklist spoilage on the inserters. That won't fix it. The problem is the packs will spoil while they're sitting in here once I'm not researching something. Um, so, have I tried getting the recipe to change with crushers on a space platform? No, I haven't done anything uh, super circuity in space. No, 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 guys. Okay, sorry. I'm not talking about these inserters grabbing spoilage from the belt. I'm talking about right now, if I stopped researching things, this has two packs already in it. Those packs will turn to spoilage, and now the lab will have spoilage in it. Um... And I just... I literally don't have a space. I guess we can do underground belts. Um, Cause on the outside, we can just output to the outside. And then on the inside, we'll just have to use underground belts. But then this steel belt is kind of harshing my melon a little bit. Um, so I'll have to move it out to the side here. And then here, we'll need to go underground, underground. Should be fine. This is really going to break stuff for a minute, but that's okay. I broke the side load on steel. Did I? I don't think so. Side load's over here. It was double side loaded. Classic Crydex. Uh, okay, so then now we need a blue filter inserter on spoilage. We're an hour and 14 minutes. All right, we got to call this episode done soon, but. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 puff, boom, puff, boom, boom. All right. Boom, 
boom, boom, boom, boom, boom, boom, boom. I'm missing the top one there. Boom, boom. Got a super force build to get rid of those lamps. Boom, 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 boom. All right. Good times, good times, good times. All right. Lights in the middle. And then we need a couple more of these on these two. And that should do it. And then we need substations everywhere because we don't have power. Hey, research with agriculture. We did it. What an achievement. I thought we had built that one there. Okay. So I think we've handled spoilage now. And the Glabian Nightmare has more packs and is headed back. So it seems to be working. Um, is it gonna run out? I feel like it is running out. This was 10,000, now it's 4,000. So we are, we are going to slow down once these reserves are gone. So after an hour or two, we'll probably be able to, to check on that and see what we're getting. Now, the other thing that's going to happen is we are going to get spoilage increasing uh, big time. Also, do we have... Something's wrong here. I think. We have too many science packs trying to flow into here. What's going on? Yeah, I was kind of worried about this. We need to research something, because we have too many, like, pink in there from when we... Uh, rebuilt everything and they're like clogging stuff up and there's not an easy way to fix that and right now I'm not research using a research that uses those packs so like I should work on this research for a minute or two to use up some of those packs I think and that might help me get unstuck At least that's the hope. Oh gosh. Oh geez. We done goofed. Uh, we definitely could beacon this. I, I, I'm gonna use the bio labs though. Also, Etra, good afternoon to you. Glad you could join to watch the Sushi Chaos. Um, wait, why is it letting more pink packs flow in? Really? Really now? That doesn't seem right. Is it because I changed it to green belts? I think it is. I think these need to be green belts. Or at least blue belts. Because I think part of the problem is things are getting bogged down because the green belts are way faster. If I make all this green, 
It might actually be okay. Maybe. Like I missed an upgrade somewhere. Uh, there we go. No, it's just that. Ah, oh, it's these. Because it won't change how many we need to change to green belts, right? Because you still fit eight items per belt on green belts. So really, it shouldn't matter at the end of the day. This will just keep the pack circulating a little faster. Um, still feels like this is too congested. I don't know what's up with that. Maybe it'll work itself out now that they're all green. Hopefully. No, it just feels like there's too many packs. What is going on here? Hmm. No, maybe we're okay. Maybe we're okay. Okay, well, now that that's going i'm gonna move that to the back of the queue here so yeah i think we will call that the end of the episode um because we've got agricultural science and it's even automated the glabian nightmare is stopped at glaba right now and glaba is producing science still as it should be get some light by these rocket silos here and calcite is the only thing that's going to be a problem and it's looking like we're going to use about 12 a minute so I will need to bring calcite every few hours until we get a proper space station that brings calcite now some of this stuff is going to settle down right like it still is making another silo out of steel and so once everything's calmed down and literally the only thing i'm making here is science i'm guessing the calcite usage will go down quite a bit because then the only thing we're paying for iron and and copper wise is the the launching of rockets and the sulfuric acid needs iron. But that's, or I mean the blue chips need sulfuric acid, which needs iron. But again, that's only launching rockets. So none of the actual uh, ingredients to this require any iron. So. Anyway, the Glabian Nightmare seems to be working properly. Cool, cool, cool. All right, well, we are going to call that the end of this YouTube episode. Uh, so for those of you watching, as always, thank you for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments below about the agricultural science, and I'll see you guys in the next one.